Metrology is a word that I've only run into recently. I like challenging myself by suddenly immersing myself in different fields. And metrology is the science of measurement. And you would think as a physicist, I would have understood what a measurement was in my undergrad education. I can tell you I did not ever get a course in what a measurement is. And if you get into the science of measurement, it's incredibly complex. And so one of the ways I think about measurement right now is that measurement is the way that we take our abstract ideas and we try to map them actually to the physical world through devices that allow us to probe the world outside of our own mind and look for structural regularities. So measurement is actually incredibly important because it's how we map our abstraction to physical reality. And if your theory doesn't correspond to measurement or you can't embed your abstraction in a measurement, you have no way of testing it. And when I started working on the origin of life, when I was a PhD student, very reluctantly at first, actually, I'll have you know, I wanted to be a cosmologist. I thought that was very romantic. Um, <laughs> and then I realized, you know, like origins of life was something that no one had an idea about. Like no one had any conceptual framing for this problem. And that actually uh, became the love of my life uh, conceptually and intellectually is, is this problem. Okay, so when I was working on it at that early stage, I thought we might be able to come up with theories, but we would never be able to test them. It turns out there was someone else on the planet, uh, Lee Cronin, who's a chemist, who was thinking about the same problem in a very different way than I was. And Lee's problem was that he didn't like the way that anyone was doing origin of life chemistry. Because of this issue of the amount of design we were putting into the experiments, we were looking for things that are on our planet now, molecular structures, and assuming that they were relevant to the origin of life as a general process in the universe, rather than looking for how unconstrained chemical systems generate complexity without any design put in by us or anything else. And so Lee is trying to build robots in his lab that can explore chemistry as messy as possible, the messier the better, because he wants to see life emerge in his lab. And he says, well, if life's gonna emerge in my lab, how will I measure it? And so this is actually the foundations of the theory that I'm gonna to introduce to you. It's called assembly theory. And the conjecture of the theory is that life is the only mechanism the universe has for generating complexity. There are no Boltzmann brains, if you know that concept. We don't get fluctuating existence of objects like in this room. You will exist nowhere else in the universe. There's not a multiverse of possibilities. You only exist here, and you exist here because four billion years was necessary to construct you on this planet. That's the framing that we have. So it's very contrary to current physics, which has this idea that everything can exist everywhere. And there might be another you out there, but it's just a very low probability. Or you might just be a brain that fluctuated into existence and your experience right now is not real. All of those things are not consistent with the paradigm that we're building. What we think is that complexity happens because of evolution and selection. And the space is so huge and the universe is small by comparison to all the things it could create that Existence is really special. If you get to exist, you are like, that's amazing. Okay. So, yes, woo! <laughs> what up for existence? <laughs> All right, cool. I like this enthusiasm. I also like existing, it's great.